My name is Sergeant Joe Fink. Work from a 24-hour shift out of homicide. And this is my workshop. The part of town that everybody knows about, but that nobody wants to see. Where the tragedies are deeper, the ecstasy's wilder, and the crime rate consistently higher than anywhere else. Skid Row. My beat. terrifying period in the history of my beat began in a little run-down floor shop called Mushniks. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Shiva. How's things today? Oh, the same as usual, Mr. Mushnik. My sister's nephew, Stanley, died in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, what happened? He got blown up. Who knows how? And that's nice. Well, you would like, maybe, as usual, some flowers for the funeral. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? I thought possibly, uh, because I always give to you all my funeral business, uh, maybe you should possibly give to me uh, a little cut rate. Look on me, Mrs. Shiva. What am I, a philatelist? I sell on Skid Row nothing but cheap carnations. And I should give you a cut rate. I can't even afford water for the flowers. To my throat, I would be giving a cut. I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls with vassals... Get up from the back! Excuse me, Mrs. Shiva, that Seymour... Uh, he's a nice boy. Why don't you let him see? What? See? Look, here I got a new customer, brand new in the yellow vest. I should let the cleanup boy, but I can't even afford chase him out right away. Flower as fresh as the springtime, Mushniks. Hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Farb. What can I do for you today? Listen, Mushnik, I haven't got much time. Send me over two gladiolas and a fern. Excellent. That's two dozen glads, one potted fern. No, 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 Mushnik. Two gladiolas and one fern. <laughs> you want I should put two gladiolas in the pot with the ferns? No, one fern, one piece altogether, three pieces. I need it for my waiting room. Yeah, it's a What? A filling canal. Good, I'll drill a bigger hole. You mean you want two crummy gladiolas among crummy fine? What kind of a decoration is that? Listen, it's my flower budget for the week. Mushnik. Who can be a dentist on Skid Row? All right, excellent. I'll send Seymour right away. Who am I to argue with science? Mm. Make it snappy. Now you are going to get it. Oh, you are going to get it. Look. Seymour Krellboyne? Now, Mrs. Shiva, we were talking from the funeral flowers, but the little... Uh, funeral! Did you call me Mr. Mushnick? No. I was calling John D. Rockefeller for to make a loan on my Rolls Royce. Sorry I said it. Now look, Seymour. You take two gladiolas. You'll cut them nice and even. You'll take one foin, you'll wrap them in a package, and you'll take them to Dr. Farr. Right? Well, go already! Now, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, my name is Burson Fudge. Excellent. I am Gravis Mushnick. Oh, that's a good one. Now, who's going to get my roses? I'll take care of you, Mrs. Shiver. Come right over here. You would like maybe some orchids for a nice girl? No, I think I'd like a couple of dozen carnations. Um, carnations. Okay. A person can't turn around these days that somebody shouldn't drop dead. You've had more than your share of bad luck, Mrs. Sheva. Bad luck, she calls it. You should have so many people kick off. You would have somebody fall on top of you, too. What about the carnations? 
Yeah, for Stanley. My carnations. You should see what that Seymour is. Oh, here are your carnations. Wait, I'll wrap them for no, you. No, that's all right. I'll eat them here. Why not? Of course, what else? They are all right? Well, I've had better. Well, this is a small shop. Oh, that's okay. You know, those big places, they're full of pretty flowers, expensive flowers. When you're raising for looks and smell, you're bound to lose some food value. I like to eat these little out-of-the-way places. Oh! Such a thing, eating flowers. Look, don't knock it until you try it, huh? Look what happened. This is what I was trying to tell you before. Look on him, everybody. Look at the quality of his work. I ask you, when I fire him, where is he going to get such another good job? You mean I'm fired? No, I'm electing you president from the United States. Yes, you are fired. Gravis, you can't do that. Who, who can't? I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You never mean it. You didn't mean it the time you put up the bouquet with the get well card in the funeral parlor and sent the black lilies to the old lady in the hospital. You didn't mean it. But this time, I, Gravis Musnik, mean it. He means it. But gee, Mr. Musnik, don't I always try to do what's right? And I'm crazy about flowers. I like flowers almost as much as Audrey does. Excellent, you're fired. Why don't you give him a chance to resurrect himself? I'd give him a chance to quit. I ain't gonna quit. You're a brave boy, you're fired. But that ain't fair, Mr. Mushnick. You know what I'm doing? I'm working on a special surprise plant just for you. I'm growing a plant like you ain't never seen before. Excellent. I can't even sell the plants I got in my shop out, you. Now, wait a minute. If he's got a new kind of plant, you want to look at it. I don't look on flowers, Mr. Yellow Vest. I got ancestors in the flower business for 200 years, but I got one shop on Skid Row, one stinking shop. I don't even like flowers. No, you don't understand what I mean. Look, I've eaten in flower shops all over the world, and I've noticed that the places that have the most weird and unusual plants do the best business. See? 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 What is this, a tango? All right. Explain me more. Well, I remember one place that had a whole wall covered with poison ivy. People came from miles around to look at that wall, and they stayed to buy. The owner got rich. No. He scratched himself to death in an insane asylum. Oh, that was my cousin Harry. All right. All right. You go home, and you get this fancy-schmancy plant, and you bring it back here. And if Mr. Yellow Vest Fouch says it's a draw, you still got a job. If he don't, out you go to Bodie, right? Don't worry. You'll like it. You'll see. <laughs> K. You've been listening to Music for Old Invalids. Our next selection is entitled Sick Room Serenade. Seymour, is that you? Yeah, Ma. Get in here and look at my tongue. But Ma, I already seen your tongue. Have you no sympathy for your poor mother? Laughing at her and mocking her illness and she's got one foot in the grave? Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, you never mean it. Oh, come on, look at my tongue. A tongue's a tongue, Ma. They all look the same to me. Oh. Did you stop at Dr. Mallard's and get the results of my tests? Yeah, he said there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, not Dr. Mallard. He, he's one doctor I thought would tell the truth. He said you should be playing fullback for the Ram. He wants me dead. I'll bet he's assistant coroner. Oh, I can't stay. He, and I know I've got my goiters coming back. I can feel it every morning after breakfast. Yeah, that's when you take those great... Oh! What you got, a little surprise for me? Open it up and see. All right. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Dr. Slurp Saddle's famous tonic. <gasps> Wait here. To be taken internally or externally for pain and neuritis, neuralgia, headache. If hit by a truck, call your physician. Alcoholic contact, 98%. <laughs> oh, Seymour, you never know what this is going to do for me.
Oh, I can feel that surge of warm health going through me already. <laughs> Look, Ma, I gotta get my plant and hurry back to the shop. You mean that lousy weed out in the kitchen? Yeah, and if Mr. Mushnick doesn't like it, he's gonna fire me. Apparently, my hearing is going out on me. I get the distinct impression that your job security depends on what Mushnick thinks of that thing. Gee, it looks worse than it did this morning when I went to work. I wish I knew what to do with it. Well, if you asked me, I'd pitch it out in the trash. I don't like my house cluttered up with rotten vegetables. Look, Ma, I gotta hurry. Can I bring you anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me the evening news. They're running a, a self-diagnosis contest. The winner gets to go to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Bye, Ma. Bye, son. I'll see the rosy edge of dawn. Drink to me, old with thine eyes, and I will... I put this on my bill. Well, here it is, everybody. What do you think of it? Well, it sure is different. It looks delicious, but don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it hasn't been feeling too well. You called that a fancy plant. It looks like it never spent an LT day in its entire life. I don't care. I like it anyway. You, you like even skunk cabbage. Yeah. What kind of a plant is this, Seymour? Well, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from a Japanese gardener over on Central Avenue. He found them in with an order he got from a plantation next to a cranberry farm. Fine, fine. You don't even know what is this plant you're growing. Well, well I gave it a name. What name? Oh, gee. What? You gave it a dirty name? You can't even mention it? Well, I named it Audrey Jr. <gasps> you named it after me! Oh, really? Well, that's the most exciting thing anyone's ever done to me. You poor kid. I don't think it's so much I should keep on spending $10 a week on your salary. But, Gravis, he named it after me. I know, and if they keep it, they'll name it Mushnick's Folly because I'll be in jail for non-payment of taxes. Are you crazy? Who, who? You, you. That's probably the only plant of its kind in the world. Don't you realize if Seymour can nurse that thing back to health, you'll have people coming here from all over? You think so, you found it? I know so, you Mushnick. Now, that's all I'm saying on the subject. Besides, I've got to get home. My wife's making gardenias for dinner. Good night, you folks. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Crazy about kosher flowers. He's a nice man. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's not so stupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep you and this dumbbell junior for a week. If you can nice it back to health, you both can stay. If you can't, you're both fired. Oh, gee, thank you, Mr. Mushnick. Don't feel sad, Seymour. Don't waste your pity on me, Audrey. I'm not worth it. Who says you're not? Everybody. Yeah, I know. But I think you're a fine figurative of a man, and, and I know that Audrey Jr. will be the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Well, I don't know. I've given it every kind of fancy fertilizer and atomic plant food and distilled mineral water you can buy, but it just gets sicker and sicker. Don't worry. You're going to be another Luther Glendale. Pasadena. Burbank. Good night, Seymour. Good night, Audrey. What's the matter, little plant? Haven't I done everything I could for you? Where did I goof? You're the first little plant I ever tried to grow, and if you die, I don't know what I'll do. Please don't die. I'll get you some water, okay? Opened up just like you do every night at sunset. I wish I knew how to make you grow. Here, let me move this out of your way so you can breathe. Ow! 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 ow. Hey, what happened? How come you woke up? Blood? You like blood? Oh, you must be kidding. Well, we'll see. What 
I'm doing for you. Ow! Oh, who would have thought it? Well, I guess there's just no accounting for people's tastes. Him, Audrey. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he delicious? Isn't he got the two dollar raise? What happened to your fingers? A bee stings. Uh, so how come I'm all of a sudden so wonderful? Five bees, one for each finger? Ten bees. Did you say I was getting a two dollar raise? Correct, my very excellent Seymour. Ten bees. What did I do now? Don't you know what you did? Just look. Oh boy, look at that. It grew. It's almost a foot long. Isn't it empirical? It grows like a cold sore from the lip. <laughs> oh, hello, young pretty ladies. What can Gravis Mushnik do for you? Well, we saw your sign outside. About the Audrey Jr. So we thought we'd come in and take a look. Well, give a look. That makes four people a day who've come in just to look at it. Oh, Dick, sure. Is that just too much? Oh, what kind of plant is it? It's an Audrey Jr. Where was it you got in trouble with 10 bees? Well, is that all? I mean, doesn't it have a scientific name? Yes, of course, but who could denounce it? You oh, would like maybe wow. to buy something. Well, we don't have any money. Except $2,000. <clears throat> but that's just to spend on flowers. So we don't have any of our own. Isn't that a drag? You got just $2,000 just for to spend on flowers? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who died? The Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're from Cucamonga High School. And we're building a float for the Rose Bowl Parade. Which is made out of flowers. Thousands of them. And we're on the committee that picks the florist. And then glues on the flowers. <sighs> Gee, that sure is a mad plant. Wow, yeah. Seymour here invented it. He did. Oh, thousands of plants. Oh, oh, girls, 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 please don't oh. damage the horticulturist. Tell me, how come you don't buy all these thousands of flowers from Gravis Mushnik? My flowers got something the others don't. What's that? They're cheap. Well, gee, if your shop is good enough to develop the Audrey Jr., I guess it can get us everything we need. Yeah, we'll talk it over with the rest of the committee. Excellent. Well, we gotta run now. Bye, all. Bye, Seymour. Bye. Bye. Bye, girls. A son. A son. Look, Audrey. I got a son. Oh, gee, Mr. Mushnik. What, Mr. Mushnik? I don't want you should call me Mr. Mushnik anymore. I want you should call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Isn't that beautiful? Seymour Krellboyn, come over here, my son. I want to talk on you about the future. Look on this fly trap. Look on it. Soon we got no more skid row. We will be rich, us. I am building for you a giant greenhouse in which you are making impossible flowers, which in turn I am selling at ridiculous prices in my giant new flower saloon in Beverly Hills. Do you see that big sign in the sky? It is saying, Gravis Mushnik in French. Isn't it exciting? And we'll have an orchestra right by the cash register. And Gravis will wave his arms. And the orchestra will play Mendelssohn's spring song. And I'll come out in a gown wrapped by somebody expensive and say, The carnations are $600 a dozen, two dozen for a thousand. It's a bargain. Get them while they last. Stop shouting. My uncle Marsh's brother Yanko just passed away in Tenafly, New Jersey. <laughs> Tell me, how much are the carnations today? The carnations are $600 a dozen. And why are they letting him run around loose? Please, please excuse my son, Mrs. Shiva. Just point to anything in the store and it is yours. <laughs> That's right. In the cash register, maybe, huh? Ah, wait a minute. Here. Here are several dozen carnations on the house, courtesy of Gravis Mushnik de Bloom, tycoon. That's my dad. Thanks. Thanks very much. Only tell me, why are you so happy? Not only did my uncle Mush's brother and uncle die, Tennessee, New Jersey. You should also give some flowers to that poor dead plant there. Good morning, Mr. Mushnik. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Shiver. Look what happened to my plant, Dad. Who are you calling Dad? Who, who? Oh, no. 
And it was so beautiful just a few seconds ago. Excellent. Just a few seconds ago, I gave away dozens of carnations free to Mrs. Shiva. I didn't mean it. You have perhaps an explanation. No, but if you give me a minute, I'll think of one. I can see it all now. We are in the poor house. That big sign in the sky, it is reading, Seymour Krellboy, rest in peace, in Arabic. Oh, you've got to give him another chance. You promised me a week, Mr. Mushnick. I'll sit up all night with that plant. It'll be healthy in the morning, you'll see. I promise, I promise. Talk. I got a talking plant. Say it again. Feed me. Oh, boy. I never been to college and I ain't been around much. But I'd have been willing to bet there ain't no such thing as a talking plant. But I'll take your word for it. Gee, Junior, I'd, I'd like to feed you. But I used up all my fingers. Feed me! Oh. Look at me, I'm all cut to pieces. But... Maybe I can find another drop here someplace. That's the best I can do. Mar, mar. But I'm already anemic. Feed me mar. Gee, Junior, I'd be happy to give you anything I got, but I gotta keep a little blood for myself or I'll be in worse shape than Mom. Mm. I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, I'll go for a walk. Maybe I'll think of something.
chow hound. Don't bother me. I got problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't care what you are. Can't you see I'm knocked out? I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. You think it's fun to be a murderer? You think it's fun to haul around a sack full of food? Oh, no, Junior. What kind of guy do you think I am? <laughs> I'm starved. Well, maybe just a snack. That looks great. <laughs> now that is what I call a salad. What do you call that salad? Cesarean. Well, before the next course, I think I'll have a nice cigar. All right? You would like maybe a cigar? <laughs> You don't smoke cigars. What am I thinking about? Where are the matches? Oh, oh, you know what I found? What? I'm looking for the matches, and I found I left the money in the other suit. Here's your mock chicken legs. You don't have any money? So what else is new? All right, all right. I made a mistake. After all, a man is entitled. Go on, this is your story. I'll wait for the punch. Don't get smart with me, girlie. I'll have you know that in my shop in the cash register, I'm having the total day's receipts, which is summing up to more than $9. You'll bring the rest to the food, then I'll go to the shop and get the money. You're playing my favorite song. Now look here, Buster. One of you is going to go down right now and get the loot while the other one stays here until the first one gets back, if you get what I mean. Oh, fine. In this fancy-schmancy restaurant, you are holding hostages, right? Right. Excellent. You eat up, Audrey. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Bye, Gravis. Rum, wine, gin, bourbon. What? Scotch, rye, tequila, sake, manischewitz. Did you bring the money? Don't bug me with the money. I got to get drunk now. What flipped him? I don't know. Look here. Here, take it. Bring me anything. Bring me everything. Cram the mint. Everything you got. OK. Gravis, what happened? Don't ask. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghosts I could handle. Don't ask. Why don't you tell me? Maybe I could help you. Help you couldn't. Try and eat something. It'll calm your aggravation. In my own shop. Audrey, you wouldn't believe it. I wish you'd break out and tell me. All right, I'll tell you tomorrow, right after I am telling the police. But Mushnick didn't come to the police. If he had, that might have been the finish of the unhappy story. It was not. Tell you, you wouldn't be interested in selling a half interest in this place, huh? 
Mr. Mushnick. We talked to the committee. And they said we could use your flowers. On the flute. Hey, guess what? We're going to feature Audrey Jr. Right on top. Boy, Can't you just picture it? I can picture it. Oh, won't the people just eat it up? Eat up the people. And we're going to have the big part of it open. So she can sit in it. Oh. The queen with her crown and scepter. She'll be so cute. Oh, you could just eat her up. Eat up the girl. Oh, there's Seymour! Oh, my job! I got a toothache and I ain't told to let go of my job! Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Now, Seymour, oh. talk on me. I got a toothache. What do you want to talk about? That plant. Is that a nice subject for to talk? The plant. The plant is great. It's, it's four times bigger than it was yesterday. I saw. I saw. How come the plant is now so big? Oh, I don't know. But look at all them people out there. We only been open a half hour. We already done seventy dollars worth of business. Eighty-five. Now look, Seymour. You gave this plant a fancy name, Audrey Jr. But I want to know right now, what do just people call it? Well, it's a cross between a Butterworth and a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap. And what are the habits of this Venus flytrap? Well, the book says it eats insects. It eats them three times in its life, and then it's full grown. Excellent. And how many times is this one eat? Well. Once or twice. You don't remember? Well, this is kind of an unusual type fly trap. That is a possibility. It may never eat again. I don't see how it could get any bigger. Then you think it don't need any more flies? Yeah. Oh, my tooth is just killing me. All right, excellent. You run along to the dentist. I'll take care of things here. Thanks, boss. Gravis, we've got to order more flowers, tons of them. I'm making lots of money. <laughs> your bill up to date, you deadbeat. <laughs> Go ahead and run, you sniveling dog. Go ahead and run. I'm glad I heard you. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh Seymour. Seymour, I got a bad tooth, huh? No, I thought this was the men's room. Well, Seymour, come back here, you bad dog. You get in there. So, you are the young man who ruined my gladiolas, huh? Sit down. Come on. Ah. Guess what? My tooth, tooth stopped, stopped hurting. hurting. Yes, I know. Let's see. Shut up and open up. Uh huh. Ah. Oh, oh. Does that hurt? Yeah. Good. You haven't felt anything yet. Uh huh. It's just over here. Seymour, who is the dentist here? You or me? I'll find that tooth. Mm hmm. Uh-huh. Look at that stalagmite. But, but don't worry, it's gonna be an easy one, Seymour. I won't even use Novocaine. Oh, you broke the mirror in my mouth. Well, don't tell me about it, stupid. Just swallow it. Uh, all right, yes. Let's see now, Seymour. Let's see, I'll have this one and this one and that one, and I have to have this one, it's Seymour. It's only one, two. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? Are you practicing dentistry without a license? No. All right. Uh-huh. I didn't know you were an elk. Good. You know, I can't afford an assistant. So I get this ready instant mix. It doesn't last very long, but it tastes good. Mm. All right, Seymour. Oh, stay away from me. Seymour. Oh, You're trying to kill me. A duel. Aha. Who? <laughs> this Dr. Farb's office? Uh, just a minute. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> I see it is. Uh, you, you can come in now. <laughs> My name is Wilberforce. Wilberforce what? Just Wilberforce. My first name is Wilbur. My last name is Force. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Well, you have an appointment, maybe? No, but you were very highly recommended to me by one of your patients, a Mrs. Eshiva. I do a lot of undertaking for her relatives. <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a customer now, and I'm all booked up for the rest of the day, so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have three or four abscesses, a touch of pyorrhea, nine or ten cavities, I lost my pivot tooth, and I'm in terrible pain. <laughs> well, I, I can't help you today. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait outside. <laughs> the patient came to me with a large hole in his abdomen <laughs> caused by a fire poker used on him by his wife. <laughs> he almost bled to death and gangrene had set in. I didn't give him much of a chance. There were other complications. <laughs> the man had cancer, tuberculosis, leprosy, and a touch of the grip. <laughs> I decided to operate. My, my patient just left. You, you could come in now. Oh, goody. <laughs> I didn't see the other man leave. Well, he went out the back door. You know, most people don't like to go to the dentist, but I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> I mean, there's such, there's a real feeling of growth, of, of <laughs> progress when that, that old drill goes in. I mean, I'd almost rather go to the dentist than anywhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> now, no Novocaine. It dulls the senses. <laughs> This is gonna hurt you more than it is me. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. Well, I made a lot of holes, and now I gotta fill it up with this here silver stuff. Well, aren't you gonna pull any? Well, uh... Oh, go on. Well, it's your mouth. Well, Dr. Favre, it's been quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here, my dirty laundry? I'm coming. I'm coming already. This should be enough for anybody. Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. I never meant to kill anybody in my whole life. I've killed two in the last two days. Well, but you asked for it coming after me with that knife and all. Fun voyage, Dr. Farr. You want anything else? <coughs> See you in the morning. How's the wife, Frank? Not bad, Joe. Glad to hear it. The kids? Lost one yesterday. Lost one, eh? How'd that happen? Playing with matches. Well, those are bricks. Yeah, I guess so. 
Got a strange one here. Railroad people say they lost one of their best detectives the other night. Oh, yeah? Down by the yards. He's watching the refrigerator cars. Refrigerator cars? Ice thieves. Oh, yeah? What happened? Don't know. Vanished. Blood on tracks. Clues? None. Anything else? Dennis. Farb. Dead? Missing. Clues? Blood in office. Where? Skid Row. Ideas? None. Check it out? Yeah. Now we are on the case. Officer Frank Stooley and me. My name is Fink. Sergeant Joe Fink. I'm a Fink. Something? It's, it's monstrositous. Yeah. And to think that you did it. Gee, Audrey, you don't have to kiss me. Don't you like me to kiss you? Yeah, but you don't like to kiss me. Why shouldn't I? Nobody else ever did. Well, I do like to. You do? You really do? You like to kiss me? Sure I do. Would you like to kiss me again? OK. That plant? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Oh, well, I guess I just have a good kisser. How, how, how did it, 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 it? Would you like to go out on a date with me some night? When? Oh, sure I would, Seymour. Anytime. Tonight? OK. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, about that plant. We got the list of flowers for the float, for the rose parade. I can't talk to you now, girls. Talk on Audrey. Oh, we got the list for the float. OK, let's take a look at it. OK. Hi, right, what's cooking? Look at my plant. My, what a large one. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Shiva. What's new? Oh, I, I got terrible news. My nephew Frankie just lost his little boy. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? He was playing with matches. Would you like to buy maybe some flowers? Uh, about 50 cents worth. Well, I'll get them for you. Look at my plant. Oh, I'm looking. Your name Gravis Mushnick? Look, I'm a Mushnick Gravis. I think that's my name. Just want to ask you a few questions. Questions ask me. Just about... want to ask you a few questions. I, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see picture. Why are you so nervous? You got a guilty conscience? No, why should I? Ever see this man? Man, uh, see the, the, the picture. Dr. Farb. So you know him? Yeah, my dentist. Uh, he, he, he maybe did something. Disappeared. Blood in his office. The other man, too. Blood in the railroad tracks. A few spare parts. Oh, okay. that, 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 Dr. Farb is murdered. Is he? No, who knows? Not me. What do you think? He doesn't know anything. OK, Mushnik. If you hear anything about these men, call our office. Sure, I'll be glad to cooperate with the police. Hello, I'm sitting. Oh, isn't it terrible what happened to your boy, Frankie? Those are the brakes. <laughs> all right, Seymour. Now you tell me if that plant is finished all grown up. He's finished all growing up. You wouldn't kid your father. My father came home. Me, idiot! It's a finger of speech. Now look. I can't stand any more that plant. It's growing me out of house and home. Well, it ain't going to grow anymore, I promise. How can you be so sure? It ate three times already. Who, I mean, what did it eat this time? Well, about, about a million Japanese beetles. So don't eat no more. It's full. Gravis! There's a lady from some kind of a commitment outside. I think it's important. Excellent. By the by, I understand you want to take Audrey out on a date tonight. That's very good with me, because I am staying to keep an eye on that Meshugana plant. Where are we going to go tonight, Seymour? Oh, I just remembered I don't have any money. Well, that's OK. We could take a walk along the ocean or something. I got a great idea. We can eat dinner at my house. My mom's a great cook. Well, that's swell. 
will. Oh, boy, I'll call her later and tell her. Oh, that's remarkable. You like? Oh, I neither like nor dislike anything, my goodness. I happen to represent the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. How about that? Tell me, who created this magnificent bloom? I did, me. Oh, and what might your name be? Seymour Krellboyne with a K. Krellboyne. Krellboyne. Raised it in a coffee can. This? Well, tell me, Mr. Krellboyne, uh, is this a freak, or, or can more be raised from the seeds? We should live so long. Well, I don't think they're going to be any more, Miss... Uh... Uh, Fischtwanger. Mrs. Hortense Fischtwanger. Uh, I think this is going to be the only one, Mrs. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger? Uh, it's probably indigestible, anyway. At any rate, I have the honor to tell you, Seymour Krellboyne, that you have been selected to receive the annual trophy of the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. A trophy? Me? Such is justice. But tell me, when do you suppose those large buds will open? Well, according to what the book says about the plants that I crossed, they should open day after tomorrow at sunset. Ah, very well. Then I shall return at that time to present the trophy. Good day. Remarkable. Oh, boy, I'm going to get a trophy. Oh, Seymour, I'm so proud of you. Oh, a real trophy. For Audrey Jr. We can put it on the floor in the rose parade. Oh, boy. Don't look at me. I I'm a terrible sight. I I'm a complete sea hag. She always says that. Oh, well, it's true. I haven't been feeling very well lately. Audrey, this is my ma, Winifred Krellboyne. Ma, this is Audrey Fulcourt. She's my girl. Hi, Audrey. Are you hungry? I sure am. I could eat a hearse. Oh, <laughs> well, sit right down, and I'll go get the first course. <laughs> sit here, Audrey. You want me to take your sweater? Oh. Yes. Never mind that. Uh, well, well, now try this. <coughs> it tastes like cough syrup. Dr. Flynn's cough syrup. A toast? To Audrey Jr. No, to Audrey Sr. an eye on you. I don't let nobody get near you. Come the soup. I don't touch it till I get the, the flavoring. <laughs> Gee, Audrey, you sure look good by candlelight. Oh, do I really see more? Yeah. Here you are. I'll try it. Sure smells different. It's different. Some kind of oil, isn't it? Cod liver oil. It's wonderful for the colon. And that's sulfur powder on the top. Plant we got. I'm hungry. No. 
Hungry? Ain't that a fine kettle for fish? Who would you like to have tonight? You look fat enough. We not only got a talking plan, we got one that makes with smart cracks. Will you listen to me, you botanical bum? Food you wouldn't get. Not from Gravis Mushnik. I'm starved. Excellent. You would unpopulate the old Skid Row. Well, you can forget about it. You wouldn't get fed from Gravis Mushnik tonight. Good night. You'll get yours. This chow mein. Uh, if it tastes a little bitter, it's because it's made of Chinese herbs and it's flavored with acromias and Epsom salts. There ain't another cook in the whole world like my ma. That's what your old man said before the louse ran out on me. You know, if you're gonna be married, you gotta be a good cook. Well, maybe you could teach me. You think to get married? Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Who hasn't? Seymour. Seymour's too young to get married. Look here. A boy's got to go out and play around a little bit. Go out on the make and have a ball. Seymour, I don't want to have a ball. I want to be with Audrey. No, no, oh, look, Seymour. Seymour. You promised you wouldn't get married until you bought me an iron lung. Well, you've been breathing for years, Ma. Well, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, son. Seek, I wouldn't know it even a fly. Come out in the light where I could see you. Man, please don't shoot. Please, please. I'm only Gravis Mushnik. You wouldn't want to kill me. Where would you hide the body? Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. Not unless you try something. Try something? I never tried anything in my life. I wouldn't try anything now. You want my money? Take it. You want I should go out and steal you some more? That's all right, too. I'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like your brand of hospitality. You'll excuse it isn't more. I'm only a poor florist. Yeah, yeah. We got about 30 bucks here. Come on now. Where's the rest of it? I was in here this afternoon. I saw about 30,000 people in here. They must have spent some money. Where is it? There ain't no more money. They came in to look on the plant. It's a big attraction, Audrey Jr. The plant. Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. They, 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 I don't got no more money, honest. Believe me. OK, let's try this. One, two, three, four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. All right, try it the other way around. Five, four, three, two. All right, all right, they're ready. Okay, big bad, where? In the plant. In the plant. The big plant, Audrey Jr. Inside the big leaf. That's right, inside. <laughs> you get it open. Just knock. In there. In there. Inside. In the bottom. I don't see anything. Way inside. Right in the bottom. You got it a date with Audrey tonight. I am no more sitting up with that no good new plant. But gee, Mr. Mushnik, you don't have to sit up with it anymore. It's all grown up now. Excellent, smart guy. How do you know it don't be hungry no more? Well, because... Tonight you are staying. 
Then tomorrow they're coming and they're going to give you a trophy, and then after that we are getting rid once and for all for that plan. Getting rid of it? Why? Don't ask why, why. The end, into the garbage can. Aloha. Oi. Yes, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, Seymour, you wonderful plant. Oh, that's all right, Audrey. I'll grow other plants, even more wonderful ones. I know you will. Did you figure out what we're doing tonight? Yeah, we're going to a place full of beautiful flowers. We have to stay here. Yeah. Well, never mind. We'll have a picnic. It'll be just like going to the country. Oh, Did you boy. Get the 3,000 pink azaleas for the arbor and the 9,000 yellow moms for the, for, for the border. Yeah, and the, the roses and we, for the front for and the back. No, around the back. What do you mean you're going to a picnic at night with that full quart girl? Don't you like Audrey, Ma? She's out after your money. I don't have any money. Oh, she's a smart one. She'll latch on to you until you get some, and then goodbye fortune. But Audrey's an honest girl, Ma. Yeah, never trust a woman who's too healthy. But Audrey had a bad cold a couple of weeks ago. Oh, a cold, a puny cold. Why don't you get yourself a real female with something decent like manana eucleosis or, or gallstones? Well, maybe she could catch something like that. The only thing she'll catch is you. And she'll take you off to some shady sanitarium and leave me to chiropractors and faith healers. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, oh gee, Ma. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll just find a nice wet alley somewhere and curl up and wait for the end. Oh, please don't die till I get back, will you, Ma? I'll take care of you. I'll always take care of you. I promise. Yeah. Bye. Gee, Audrey, I never tasted food like this before. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly? What does that cure? Nothing. It's just a food. Well, what good is it if it doesn't clear up pimples or shrink your sinus tissues or something? You're just being silly, Seymour. Seymour, what do you want to be? Well, I want to grow things. If I had a lot of money, I'd go to the South Seas where they grow the most fabulous plants in the world. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I'd like to go to the South Seas, too. There's no reason why you couldn't go. Would you take me with you, Seymour? Oh, I couldn't very well go without you, Audrey. Why not? Well, because, because I'm in love with you, Audrey. Oh, I'm in love with you, too, Seymour. Feed me. What'd you say? I, I was just kidding. I'm hungry. Seymour. I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? Oh, food. You didn't even say that. Oh, yes, I did. I said it. I said it. Oh, I'm looking right at you. Uh, I'm a ventriloquist. You're a what? A ventriloquist. Feed me. Seymour, do you feel all right? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then stop all this nonsense and kiss me. I'm dying from hunger. All right, if you're so hungry, eat something, but forget about me. Gee, I'm sorry, Audrey. Give me to eat. If you can't control yourself, I'm going home. I need some chow. Oh. Uh, for an empty stomach. Audrey, please wait. Listen to me. I've listened to all the nonsense I want to hear, Seymour. You're a nut. You tell me that you love me, and then you act like a complete idiot. Please listen, Audrey. I'll be able to explain everything soon. Well, why can't you explain now? Because so many things are so important. I want to marry you, but I got to take care of Mom. Well, that plant in there is going to make it all come true. Tomorrow they're going to give me a trophy and I'll be famous. I'll be a big botanist. And then we can go to the South Seas, just like we planned and but all. But that doesn't have anything to do with what went on in there. When you're ready to come to your senses, Seymour, then I'll talk to you. Good night, Seymour. I'm getting pretty tired of you. I need food. I don't care what you need. Look what you've done to me. You not only made a butcher out of me, but you drove my girl away. Shut up and bring on the food. Don't tell me to shut up. You shut up. Who raised you from a bunch of little seeds? Who fed you all them high-class fertilizers and sat up all night with you when you were sick? Nobody else would have done that for you. Do you think anybody else would have brought you human beings to eat? You're darn right they wouldn't. 
Well, I've helped you, and you've helped me. Now shut your trap and go to sleep. I'm tired. Crow boy! Turn around! Close your eyes. You are asleep. Open your eyes. Now you will do as I say. Do you follow me? Yes, master. You will go out and find me some food. Yes, master. Now be gone and waste no time. My name is Leonora Clyde. How's the rain on the rhubarb? Master is hungry. Well, hello there. I gotta find food for Master. Food I gotta find for Master. For Master, I gotta find food. Maybe I can help. Who are you? My name is Leonora Clyde. I love you. Master wants food. Let the old goat wait. The night is young, and so are we. Master doesn't eat goat. Well, what kind of food does he like? Ooh! <laughs> That's more like it. Kiss me. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Ah, oh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? <laughs> Master would like more fat. Speak for yourself, John. My name is Seymour. My name is Seymour. That's my name, too. Uh, are you interested, or are you just wasting my time? I never thought anybody would volunteer. Do you volunteer? Sure, I do. All right, if you're sure you want to volunteer. All right, my place or yours? I don't care. Well, flip a coin. I don't have a coin. Flip anything, silly. Well, there's a rock. Wet or dry? Wet. The search was narrowing, and we knew that soon we would have the killer. Not that we had any more clues than before, but we had to tell the chief something. I had that feeling in my bones that the mystery was drawing to its climax, and I was determined to be on hand. All right, out, out, out. Nobody is in. Today we have a special occasion for Seymour Crowboy, which has invented the big plan. So I want everybody should please stay out of the way. We want Seymour! We want Seymour! We want Seymour! Seymour! Oh! 
I tell you, this business is worse than being a conductor in a revoluting door. I'll be glad when this day is finished. What's a celebration? They're presenting my son with the trophy. Yeah, what'd he do, run away from home? Please don't look at me that way, Audrey. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Seymour. I just don't understand you. I'll explain everything after the ceremony. You, police, what are you doing here? I heard there was something going on here this evening. Just thought we'd come by and keep an eye on things. Look, we don't need no eyes kept on nothing. Everything. The Society of Silent Flower Observers has arrived and sunset is almost upon us. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. We are honored for to have you. Still working on those disappearances. We think they were murdered. Hey, look here, young man. That's no way to talk at a time like this. Let me see your tongue. Uh-huh. Know what you got? Just the facts, ma'am. Trench mouth. Uh -huh. I know. I had it back in not nine. Better have that looked into, Frank. Whatever you say, Joe. Uh, Mr. Crowboy, uh, the sun is going down now, and uh, you do think those buds are going to open? I hope so. Because if they don't, Mr. Krellboy, we shall just have to present the award at another time. Oh, it's starting to open. It's the mark. Oh, look, the first bud is open. <sighs> Isn't that the railroad cop? Look at the rest. What do you think, Frank? They're all there, Joe. Yes, you're right. Mr. Crowboy, how do you explain this? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. That's right, officer. He didn't mean to kill them. Seymour, Seymour, you promised you'd explain. Looks like they're getting away, Joe. Yes, you're right. Let's catch them. Right. Oh, now the float will be perfect. Yeah. <laughs>
You wouldn't find him here with the toilets. Let's go back. You messed up my whole life. Beat me! I'll feed you. I'll feed you like you've never been fed before. to give up, gentlemen. You wouldn't find him tonight. Look, the door's open, Frank. Yeah. He was such a good boy. Seymour! I didn't mean it. <laughs> 